She's got roots coming, yay, but also boo. The entire rim of her pot has broken up. That is a major boo. And to top it off, it is my Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven. However, after two years of not repotting her, it is time, regardless of sheath or not. The last time I repotted her, I have to say, she just continued on like nothing had happened. And she bloomed beautifully for us, regardless. But you know how the saying goes, do not become overconfident when it comes to orchids. Expect the worst, anticipate and hope for the best. And that is exactly what I anticipate with this repot because, madam here, I think the only cumbersome thing that is going to happen is how I'm going to get her out of the pot without a rim. I've got nothing, with the exception of my hammer. Everything else should be pretty straightforward. At least that is what I'm banking on. So let's repot and chill. <laughs> it is wonderful to have such a big orchid you can just grab by the structures and pull. Of course, she has to be nicely pot bound in order for us to do that, <laughs> which she is. There's no point of squeezing anything here. It's just solid. And every time I push down, I can hear more cracking on the pot itself. And somebody is probably going to say, cut the pot. It'll make your life easier. Yes, but... When there's an orchid that is pot bound, then we have issues because the roots are right up against here. My secateurs are going to cause much more damage, I can assure you. Oh, what have we got here? Yeah, though, that's not alive. That's okay. That's not what the problem is. <laughs> but I'm going to keep trying. I soaked her in fertilizer, a full 600 parts per million of fertilizer just to make sure that whatever we do after this, she's got enough to go and work with. Let's just say to combat the stress. <laughs> and I'm saying repot and chill, although I'm a little bit stressed out until I get her out of the pot, because once we've got that, everything else is just proceeding as usual. I'm already seeing some nice roots right down in the crater there. That looks lovely. I wonder if I can just tease her out. <laughs> it's like it's like breaking cookies here. That's okay. These pots have been in my collection now a good five years. They've served their purpose. And I can get this in a pot size. I can replace them. And that's okay. So that, that, that makes me feel a lot better. Now, of course, I don't want to be pulling too hard and rip one of the pseudobulbs off or crack it. So yeah, here we go. Let's go with the back. Ah, there's good roots back there too. It's a no win-win situation. A good tap at the bottom, at the base here, also does wonders. Let's see how far we've gotten. Any give at all. Mm. Well, I shall continue with this and I'll cut two when she's coming out. Oh, she's loose. In the meantime, the welcoming committee did their thing. <laughs> and if everything goes well, I shall be done with all the filming before the farewell committee kicks in <laughs> and does their job. <laughs> My daughter just came home for her lunch break. I thought she was going to come out nicely. We still got some resistance. She is loose. Ah, oh, here we go. Woohoo! Woohoo! La 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 la. Potential? Potential. I see a lot of good potential. And I see a lot of fun in the repot. If it is your first time on my channel, what you're about to see is going to look a little bit radical. I don't want you to get squeamish, but this is how I go about repotting. When I have an orchid that is as pot bound as this, and I don't want to be touching her for the next two years, maybe three, it all depends. But you can see that this orchid is super, super vigorous in her root growth. Two years and we've got more going on than we had before. The older ones die off, that is to be expected. But what I'm intending to do here is go up, I will try and protect nice roots, but is go up to about there and just do like a 30% cut. That'll give me access into the center of the lecker and the root mass here. Gorgeous. 
And with that, re-establish the aeration, the gas exchange, oxygen exchange, everything that you can think of, which is much needed in a LECA and self-watering setup. And yes, while that is going to look radical, because that also includes removing some good roots, it is a needs-must operation for the health of the orchid. I'm up for it. I hope you are too. Okay, I hope that I'm going to keep you in frame. <laughs> I'll be stopping and having a look at the screen every once in a while because as I get going with this, I probably get a little bit carried away, move the orchid around, some things slip out of frame, but I wanted to get you in close enough at the beginning so that you can see what I'm doing and then afterwards it doesn't look like, huh? How did that happen? At least you get an idea. So one point of access that is always relatively easy for me is to first rip out, for lack of a better term, but literally rip out my microfiber. Any collateral damage that happens, c'est la vie. I'm only going to add to that with my actions, which are coming up next. I'm going to start off tentatively because it's like a haircut. Start with taking off a little less than what you're aiming for, because at the end of the day, let me tell you, it might end up that you are getting to where you are initially aiming for just by chance and you know happenstance so just like a hairdresser start off with less see what you're up against especially if you're new to leka and self-watering or semi-hydroponic growing there's no reason to be as radical right out of the gate i always say i'm super fussy about every root until i see what's in the pot now that i see what's in the pot I literally could just go around and go do 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 really, really fast. But even I, <laughs> and I don't say that because I know everything, some of my orchids are failing, but even I start off tentatively because at the end of the day, we want the roots. It is because of the roots that the orchid is strong and can perform and bloom as she usually does. Eventually, the whole root system will get a clean up. But we don't need to live up to the channel name, Ninja Orchids, and go all ninja about it straight away. There is no harm in being just, you know, just a little bit observant. Where are we going? Where are we cutting? The intention here as well is to get as many dead roots out as possible, because why not? While we're at it, we might as well, right? But if it is in any way an issue for me, and the orchid, then I do leave dead roots on because at the end of the day, the work of the cleanup is so much more exponential than what is remaining in the media that is dead in the future pot. Just something I want to point out here. You see this root, white, and then there's like little rings over here. Those are the roots that didn't get flushed consistently to continue to grow. So there was a period where it was a little drier, much like the rings on the tree. So you had a little bit of a drier period while the root was in active growth, and then it got flushed, a little bit of a drier period. And to my understanding, this is exactly a sign of what happens during my winters. So if you see that, there's nothing wrong with the root. It's just there was more moisture around the root at one point and then a lot less while it was an active growth. It doesn't mean my media dried out. It just, mean, you know, it just means that the root is not as wet as it was when it was flushed and then the time frame after flushing. So if you're wondering if your roots have a problem when you see that, don't worry about it. That's just how much water it has had when the water then stopped being available. It just broke a root tip. This is a dead root, but there's a root tip on a dead root from another source. Okay, homage, but that is part of the whole collateral damage thing that I was talking about. We're gonna focus on long-term as opposed to short-term. And another thing you may notice what I don't do is try and find the root all the way to the top, the base, to get the whole thing out all in one go. Because I don't want to be tearing through the lecker 
where I don't know if an old root has attached itself to a new root and I'll be ripping that new root apart. So I go, I inch my way up with the old roots. See, we're already establishing quite a nice little aeration point there. The only reason I'm kind of now focusing on going up and up is because my dead roots are so obvious. You see that? I don't need to do the harakiri just yet. I may. I may still do that because that was the initial plan, but while I have such great insight into the dead roots, I'm going to avoid doing that. And then possibly last minute, I'll chop 30% of the root system off. So this root looks like it's got algae on it, but it is firm. It's okay. I want to get at these guys in here. You see this dead root here? If I were just to pull it now hard, I don't know if it's up against something nice and, you know, I don't want to break that. So while it's a little bit more pedantic, a little bit more tedious, this is how I operate. <laughs> Literally, I inch my way in and that is a perfect way of expressing it because it really is one inch at a time Two and a half centimeters for everybody in continental Europe <laughs> Oh, You know what even though dead roots freak us out Not when you have a vigorous orchid It's a pleasure to see dead roots on a repot because you know the moment you get rid of them there's a whole, whole new environment and hole for oxygen exchange created almost instantly. But we'll get to that. I want to say thank you so much for being here. I also want to thank you for your support. I have no intention of making this video a two hour long video. That's what it's going to take me to repot this orchid. I've got plenty of time on my beautiful sunny afternoon in southern Spain. I don't want to take up your time, but if I do find something interesting, I'm going to stop what I'm doing, switch the camera on, and show you and talk you through it. And then, of course, you know what else would really help the channel? Yeah, no surprises there then. YouTube loves videos that get lots of likes. I would appreciate if you would help me out with that. YouTube also loves videos that get shared when the link gets copied. Oh, if you could help me out there as well. And YouTube likes to see a channel growing. So if you haven't subscribed, let me tell you something, not just YouTube, but I would appreciate if you were to subscribe to the channel as well, because I'm a little bit desperate at the moment to um, somehow make it through the day. Let's put it that way. And I'm not going to be doing any sad fishing, but reality is if you would subscribe to the channel and do all the fun stuff that YouTube algorithm adores so much, it would go a long way and know that it lands on a very grateful heart. So thank you so, so much. For the fans of the fiddle and the cautious, look at these root tips like little spears all pointing in one direction. And I have a cluster of dead roots in here. And I'm just going to circle my way around and try to remove, even if it's just in little increments. If I break a root tip, that'll be on film. Don't try to hide my mistakes on my channel. There we go. Awesome. There's still more. But another thing that we have to do, especially in this kind of a setup where a wet dry cycle is not a thing, is just to make sure that we don't get carried away, lose track of time. We have to keep the exposed roots damp. They are not adapted to go dry. So that is something to be very mindful of. And for that, I have my handy dandy sprayer. Just making sure that their status quo is maintained as best as possible because it's easy to get carried away, lose track of time, and boom! Your very wet environment accustomed roots are exposed too long in the dry air. And then it's not because of the repot that they will fail, but because they were stressed out. 
and not in conditions they were accustomed to. So keep that in mind. Many ways to lose roots. Getting them to be too dry for too long in semi-hydroponics is only one way. And everybody that already has seen a repot of mine, you can see what I'm already eyeing here. <laughs> We're gonna get rid of fern roots. <laughs> A thought crossed my mind about, you know, people saying Lekau does well for two years and then the orchid dies. Now, while that is true in some instances, and that's why I have rescue orchids, you see, Leka inorganic growing does not stop you from having to repot your orchids. You can see how dense everything is. While with the inorganic media, we can always like get away with a few years more or for example, up pot, and you know, if we don't have the time to do what I'm doing now, but only for so long. And I think that it is a misnomer to think that, well, I'm growing an inorganic, all I need to do is get a bigger pot and just fill around with Lekka. It will work, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it comes also with a lot of work. If you don't clean the root system every now and then, yes, with a bigger pot, you're creating more aeration around what would be the new roots, but you see the inner core is also going to continue to get more and more and more condensed because the roots are not going to go, oh, look, all the outside there, there's oxygen. They're going to try and find their way into this matted mess, into the center, and they're going to fail. So it is fundamentally important, in my opinion, from my experience here in southern Spain, that in order to be long-term successful in growing with inorganic media, you need to ensure that there is still oxygen exchange in the pot. And while I always advocate for rigorous and regular flushing, there is also a need that that's just going to go so far for so long. There is no point in flushing a pot that is completely and utterly consumed by roots and lecker. While it is a beautiful sight, while it is nice, it's a great result and that's the result that we want. It is dangerous to just go with, ah oh, yeah, I'm up potting. I don't know if you've watched many videos on lecker self-watering, lecker semi-hydroponics, no matter what your hydroponic setup is. And uh, people just say, it's so convenient, I can just up pot. Well, tell me how that's working out after five years because I can assure you that unless an orchid throws out maybe only two or three roots per year five years and uh, yeah that's when problems will start if you just keep up potting and up potting when I do videos and I up pot I, I will tell you exactly why I am doing it and I will also tell you what I believe I can get away with and why I can get away with it. But I will also tell you that a proper root ball cleanup is on the calendar as soon as I can do something about it. Especially for example, when conditions change in my case, then, you know, sometimes an up pot is necessary because there is something that we needed to intervene so that the orchid doesn't have a problem. But a proper, proper repot Oh, she's coming loose at the back here. I didn't even pull her here, but okay. But a proper, proper repot root ball cleanup. Oh, every two years, especially a vigorous root system like this. And depending on the size of the pot, maximum three. I will also always tell you the last time I repotted an orchid so that you can see how well or not well the roots have grown in the time of the repot to present day with a new repot we broke a root tip right here because it is important for you to see the continuity of an orchid as opposed to she was new two years later these are the roots okay so what does she look like four years later and like my dendrobium Krista Erdman I had not repotted her since she arrived in my collection I got away with it because the orchid doesn't grow that many roots per new growth so the pot wasn't full and after four years, well, it was a good idea to get her repotted. I don't want to cut the back off here. 
and it's almost like it's going to sever on its own. So I'm just going to be mindful of that. I don't want to lose the back simply because I don't want to lose the strength of the orchid. So yeah, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. The size of the roots make a big, big difference. If you pot up a seedling that had to establish for a year, you can get away with an up pot, no problem. But then know that within another year, there should be a repot coming or maximum two years after that. If you have any questions about the things that I'm saying as I work my way through, please let me know because it's possible that I've already addressed all that in other repotting videos, but it's also, you know, maybe you're watching a video for the first time on my channel. You're like, what are you doing? You can just up pot. No, you can't. <laughs> At least I won't. And I wouldn't advise it with anybody at all because you need to understand what you're getting yourself into. This is, a not, this is not a one-stop shop, set it and forget it growing method. There is work involved as well. It has its absolute advantages and I like every single one of those advantages and take advantage of what inorganic can, growing can do for me. But it still requires a lot of work. I had no intention of this coming off, it just literally fell off. It didn't have to do much intervening at all, it was getting in the way, snagging everywhere as well. So this would be, a, it's not, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to see if I can propagate anything, but I don't see any eyes here that would do anything for us at all. Oh well, it's the season, no harm, no foul, I can at least see if it wants to activate. But what I wanted to show you was, while I wasn't trying to get my support out, I've released enough roots now that it will actually just slide out. Just let me just turn that around so that the loop unlocks itself from that root network. It wasn't my plan, but now that we've gotten to this stage, ta-da, there we go. I still have to get into all of that and figure out how much I want to mess with this. But in order to get into this, I'm gonna have to be messing with all of this. So let's see, at least I'm going to give myself another 30 minutes and see how far I get. The back part I'm really happy with. If I wanted to, I could stop right now. Because having lost the back pseudobulbs, I've got a great aerated pot coming up. Plenty of room, etc. But I want to continue. I want to try and see if I can get this mat of dead roots out. I wanted to try and do a little quick rinse before I show you what I'm up against, what I've come to so far, why I can't get more fern roots out than I would like to. <laughs> but I think we've done a pretty good job. I don't even know what time it is. So I hope the camera is compensating for any kind of lack of light before we put her up. How's that? After. Do you remember what we had before? Methinks. That's a job well done. Yes, there are probably a couple, maybe 10 dead roots still in down there, but I have made enough air, enough space, enough of everything for even that new root tip to find nothing else but goodness and gas exchange. That's what I was referencing about in the earlier commentary. I don't know how long ago that was that you may be able to fill up around the outer edges of a bigger pot. The roots will go down in the middle no matter if the growth is on the outside and eventually suffocate themselves if we don't give them the space and the air. The oxygen, let's put it that way. O2. O2 is part of water. So now that the back end of my orchid is missing, <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I was not wanting the back end to separate. I wanted the back end, I wanted the whole orchid in this 24 centimeter pot. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Just want to make sure I stick with the program. It's been such a long time since I've spoken to you last. Real time, that is. I did mention cutting roots off like Figaro. So I don't want to stop doing that, especially ones that are cracked. This followed the contours of the older pot, but anything long and dangling, we don't need that. Even though it's got root tips on it, we're going to preserve the root tips that are a little bit higher. 
they also got less bashed in the process of cleaning the orchid out. You see there, the little cracks and the steely, and it's dangling, so we'll take that off as well. Back to where the root is the strongest. And there's another root in the way, just bothering me. There's lots of roots in the way. I wanna make sure I cut or even just pull the right one off. There we go. This one is long, but it's in a circular motion. So we're doing a little bit of bonsai cleanup on a root system so that we have everything that needs to grow well has the opportunity to grow well. Anything that we bruised, damaged, or cracked in the process of the repot, well, that's just gonna decay in the pot. And while we've got her in this position, we just wanna do our due diligence. And if you don't stay circular, <laughs> you're coming off. I don't mind the brown tips at all. And I hope everything there was just now in focus. But I am digging this. I think I'm just going to leave her in the center because look, what if? Look at that. Okay. I know, this looks bruised, it may fail, but look at what's coming here. Beautiful eye, and another beautiful eye right there. You guys, if the back fell off, maybe we're gonna get ourselves a second lead, and she's going in the middle in a 24 centimeter pot for a five bulb Cattleya Dinard. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna give you my next reasoning why I'm gonna do this because I don't have an orchid that I can work with during the winter months because I've never put anything into an oversized pot. Seeing as my space in the winter indoor holding area, grow space is extremely limited. So yeah, I have to watch what I pot up, how big the pots are, everything, you know, eventually has to go indoors at some point. Well, I want to insulate her from the cold temperatures. And that is why I'm putting her in this large pot, at least for this winter. She's gonna have a lot of lecker around her root system. Maybe helping to ward off the cold temperatures from her root system. How about that? Huh? I think that's a great idea. Position, check. <laughs> Third hand. With a little bit of a jiggle, we're gonna raise her up. Very, very gently. I don't want her too high. It's not always gonna be humid in my climate, so I would like to have her a little bit lower in the pot so that the humidity stays nice around her and reduce any kind of drying out of root tips, which I'm also going to add to that small lecker for the surface so that new roots don't have such a long way to mosey around the surface of trying to find their way into the pot. Okay, <laughs> let's drain her. Something is missing, something is missing. Her tag. The proportions are completely whack. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Of five bulbs in this monstrosity, but this is important for me because this is completely appropriate, even if for the time being it looks silly. I'm hoping to get two, maximum three years out of her. Now that the back end has separated, it is possible that one of the two eyes, if not both of the good viable eyes, will also start growing at the back end. Not this year, probably next year, and if not then, the third year. But should it happen in any time between this repot and the next repot, you saw how vigorous the root system is. And the root system, for the most part, stays alive year in, year out. That all has to be taken into consideration. 
if I want to leave an orchid of this caliber in her pot for two or three more years, instead of having to interfere again next year. I don't want to stress this orchid out every year. Meanwhile, it takes forever to do a repot like this. So while it is convenient to up pot because we're working with inorganic media, long term, it is not the way to go with semi hydroponics. <laughs> Hi from Siliano. <laughs> He's been very patient. And if you've made it to the end of the video, so have you been very patient. I really appreciate it. Moving forward, let's see if she blooms. And if she blooms, what quality do her blooms have? I have got my work cut out for me. There's going to be a lot of flushing in the coming month to six weeks, every third day at least. You know, everything is nice and new and squeaky clean in there, lots of space. I'm going to be pumping that water into that pot, letting the oxygen get in there. <laughs> it's going to be such a joy. And she has a brand new pot. It's got a rim worthy of an orchid like this. So you can see that I'm excited about it. I babble. Your patience if you stuck with me through to the end is very much appreciated. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that by now you've already liked the video. And if you hadn't, maybe I've convinced you up to this point now, it's worth a like and a subscription. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye from Siliano and myself. <laughs>